So once we have uh, PyCharm installed, first thing we're going to do is open PyCharm. And uh, we'll open PyCharm, we're going to create a new project. So file, uh, new project. And it's going to prompt us here to save it somewhere. Uh, we can select anywhere we want to save it. We can save it in uh, whatever we want. So we can make a new file and call it uh, ADD session. OK. And uh, we've got it here. Perfect. And press create. Now, uh, open current window. OK. And now we're waiting for Python to uh, create a new, Python to create a new project for us. It's installing any, any um, IDE help stuff uh, that, that is required. It's taking a bit of time, I guess. So here we are, we're back, it's loaded. And uh, the first thing we're gonna do now is open up a new file. So we go file, a new scratch file, and we want a Python file. And here we go, we've got a Python file. Um, and uh, as with every programming language in the world, um, when you start up uh, a new, uh, when you start learning uh, Python, the first thing you're going to do is Use the print command, open brackets, and type in, there we go, uh, hello world, hello world. And then we can run, just press run, run, uh, scratch four, it comes up with hello world. It's the first code that we've ever written down, and this is the first thing that happens. Hello world. Okay, so we've learned the first command. Our first command in Python is print. So what else can we do with print? Well, how about a little challenge, right? How about a little challenge? Um, because we know that whatever we write in print in this format like this, so we print, open brackets, uh, little quotation marks and close brackets, in between the quotation marks, whatever we write, uh, on the file, um, it's instructions for the computer uh, to print out. So this is the instruction. I want you to print hello world, okay? Uh, and that's the way you write it. You say print, open brackets, hello world, the quotation marks. There's a reason why the quotation marks exist and uh, we'll go through it a little bit later. But for our first challenge, um, you can pause the video after I say the challenge, you, you try it yourself. But we want to draw a shape. How would we go about in drawing a triangle using just the print command? Right? That's the only function we know. It's a print function. So how are we going to draw a triangle? We'll pause the video and, and, uh, and try it out. But I'll give you the answer now. So if we go print, and again, we need the quotation marks. And uh, within the quotation marks, we're going to go like this. I'm going to go like this. And we also need... Uh, oops. Well, I don't know where it is on the keyboard. Let's see if we can find it. Nope. Um, That is this thing. Ah, there we go. Right, so we are continuing on. 
we're going to print open brackets I'll do quotation marks right there a little bit more there we go and uh, we've got that and we'll go ahead and copy it four more times like so and one more time we're gonna go with actually no that's fine we'll go with underscores there we go like that and if we run this now we get a little triangle that's just a simple exercise uh, for all of us to do. So what did we learn about uh, with, by doing this exercise? Well, we learned that the order by which we write code matters. Why? Well, because the computer reads in lines starting from the top. So it'll read hello world first, uh, and then it will read, okay, print this, and then print this, and then print this, and print this, like that. Um, so you will notice that there's no space, we left a space here, but there's no space here because that is an empty command. It doesn't do anything. Uh, computer doesn't go uh, and, and do anything with that. So let's move on to what I like to call, well, what's called variables. Variables. And uh, data types. So variables and data types. Uh, by the way, when you hashtag at the start of the line, the computer doesn't read that. This is just a title for us. We like to, as a, in programming, you like to leave notes in order to tell people um, uh, what it is your code is doing. But in this case, we're interested in variables and uh, data types. So don't be afraid. It's just a fancy name, but it's basically like algebra. Uh, but variables are very important. Why? Because it makes it easier to change some the same values in our code by changing just one line. It's one of the most used methods to store data in our codes. So let's start by typing. Using our print command again. Oops. Uh, open brackets. Um, there once was a man named Bob, right? And let's just copy that a few more times. Copy that again. Bob lived in a house in the woods. Right? Um, he liked the woods no yeah and he He didn't enjoy being called Bob. So what do we have here? We have this four statements in print format. So when we run it, it just prints. There once was a man named Bob. Bob lived in a house in the woods. He liked the woods. He didn't enjoy being called Bob. Okay, perfect. So what if we wanted to change the name George to John? So the name Bob to John. Um, you would have to manually change it. You know, we'll have to go here and say, instead of Bob, we'll have to write John, right? But what if there's an automatic way to change all of these uh, using just one uh, command? Well, that's what happens when you use variables. So how do we use variables? 
Uh, you can use variables to store our character's name, and we can also store the woods, which is our location, right? So step one, we have to give a name to the variable and then give the variable a value. So how do we do that? Uh, well, if we go uh, small letters, character name is equal to let's go like that Bob. And also if we write location is equal to woods. Now character name you notice that I didn't put a space there because the way we write variables has to be one word. So we use the uh, underscore here in order to connect different words. Uh, it's just the way we write uh, code in order for the computer to understand. So this is how you type a variable. So where does it go? How do we implement it into our, our, uh, our code? Well, you have to first put it on the top because remember the computer reads from the top to the bottom and then we need to integrate it within our code so we have to say uh, the once was a man named put a space and we have to go it's that statement plus character name so similar here uh, instead of woods, we leave the space there. So it's that plus the location. So this is how we integrate it in there because we have to leave it outside the quotation marks. There's a reason for that. Uh, we'll go through it a little bit later. So it's the same here. Plus location. And instead of Bob, we go plus character name. So let's run it. There once was a man named Bob. Bob lived in a house in the woods. He liked the woods. He didn't enjoy being called Bob. Perfect. So we got it. He didn't enjoy being called Bob. So how do we change the names and ages in the print statement? Uh, so how do we, how do we, actually change all of these things uh, to be called um, so you know instead of Bob to be called John well we just go here and write John when we want woods maybe he lived in Manchester right so there once was a man named John Bob John lived in a house in the Manchester mm, the doesn't quite fit but in the Manchester the <laughs> <laughs> great city of Manchester there we go so the one wasn't the once was a man named John um, ooh, Bob again so let's change that uh, so character name plus that statement the once was a man named John John lived in a house in the great city of Manchester he lived he liked the great city of Manchester. He didn't enjoy being called John. Perfect. We've done it. Everything's perfect. Everything's great. Um, so simply put, you can change the variable to anything you want as many times as you want by just altering one thing. And that is the value of that variable. In this case, John is the value of the variable and the location is great city Manchester. So another cool thing, I can change the variable midway modifying the value. What, is, what, what do we mean by that? Well, uh, I'll give you a challenge. How can we change the variable name after the second statement to be equal to Mike? So after the second statement, which is after this, we want to change the character name to be Mike. How do we do that? Pause the video and try it out yourselves. I'll give you the answer right now. We will type in the variable again, because we're talking about the variable. And this time we want to say that your value is going to change 
to actually be Mike. So if we press play now, you'll see there once was a man named John. John lived in a house in the great city of Manchester. He liked the great city of Manchester. He didn't enjoy being called Mike. I would imagine not everyone would be uh, enjoying being called something they're not. So, what are the different data types we can store in a variable? Huh? What are the basic data, uh, data types? Well, the first one that we already have here is called a string. So, a string, remember, we can name whatever we want. So, a variable is something equal to something. So, a string is anything within a quotation mark. So, anything we write, numbers, letters, uh, anything we want. So that is uh, what a string is. It's basically uh, a collection of letters uh, or, or writings. Uh, so the other type, so if we go like, okay, let's just, let's just write it down. A string uh, is equal to uh, anything in a quotation mark. Or in quotation marks. Okay, let's just leave it there. The second uh, type is numbers. Also, strings are just basic plain text. That's how the computer reads it. Anything within quotation marks, it reads as a basic plain text. Now, numbers are one, two, three. Uh, it could be. Uh, you could have a point, uh, something, whatever you want. It's a number. That's anything that's you can store that value within there. Um, and the other one is Boolean. So um, a Boolean is equal uh, to either true or false. OK, so it's a Boolean thing. Uh, so you can say, for example, uh, is male and it's equal to true uh, because uh, our friend uh, John, who's been, uh, who's been called Mike, is actually male and that is true. Um, and yeah, just remember to use underscores if you're, um, if you're separating things when you're writing variables, it's very important. Otherwise, I'll show you now, is male equal true? You see all these uh, yeah, statement expected. It's expecting an underscore uh, because right th the way it is now it's not uh, it's, it doesn't read true or anything like that it's unresolved it doesn't understand what it is uh, because we're giving it two words here instead of one then a variable needs to have a name that is one word um, so working with strings let's continue on um, let's end 